Today I would like to show you how it is possible to control the power flow in and out of an inverter. The lesson is based on an earlier lecture about uh, DC-AC inverters, uh, which is also on Facebook. You can easily find it. We said that the inverter is controlled by pulse code modulation, performed by a controller, uh, which triggers the four power electronic modules of the inverter in order to get a smooth sinusoidal uh, shape, shaped output. The example was based on an entirely passive load. So there is only a resistor and an inductor. And we replace this resistor and inductor now by an active uh, element. And this active element could be a grid. So we could connect this inverter to the grid but it could be as well a motor or a generator. We want to learn how we can either pump electric uh, energy stored in the battery to the grid or the other way around, utilize power of the grid to charge the battery. As I said earlier, the grid could either be a motor, a generator or whatever. So first we talk about the grid voltage and the second thing which is important, it's the control signal. For a better understanding, I shift the control signal under the load voltage signal or the grid voltage. So you have here the grid voltage signal and the control signal, which is generated inside uh, the controller. So grid voltage signal, control signal. The next thing is that I make sure that both of these signals are absolutely in sync. That means they are exactly in phase. So this control signal is now in phase with the grid voltage signal. As long as the grid voltage and the control signal voltage are in sync, there is no real power exchange between the battery and the load. The only thing which is exchanged is uh, reactive power it is exchanged at double the fundamental system frequency. In this case, it could be 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz, for example, in US. Otherwise, at the moment, no power exchange. By the way, the power exchange, of course, is the red curve. Now we want to start to push power from the battery to the network. In order to do so, we will start to, to give a, the control signal a certain phase shift compared to the grid voltage signal, meaning we start to give it the leading edge. Then you can see how we give it the leading edge. So we move it in this direction. And as a result, we see that the power from the battery starts to be pushed into the grid. And we can even go further. You see the power is increasing as long as we shift the signal and give it a leading edge. So the power is shifting and we get the maximum and all is, uh, in, uh, as a, is a function of the leading edge of the control signal versus the grid uh, voltage signal. We take back the leading edge a little bit and then the power uh, goes back. It goes back to zero where we have again uh, reactive power as at the beginning and then we start to pump power from the grid back uh, to the battery and as a result we can now see that this is moving back and forth as a function of the lead of the control signal versus the grid or motor or whatever other signal we have. So let's now have a look at my little simulator. You can access the simulator on www.ecsp.ch. Now you see that I have replaced this passive resistor from the inverter lesson by an active component. In this case, it could be a motor, it could be a grid connection, it could be a generator or whatever. What you see here now is that the signal from the load, the blue curve here, is in perfect sync with the signal generator 
from my PCM controller. So they have the zero crossing exactly at the same point. So it's uh, in, perf in phase and therefore the power flow from the battery to the load is uh, limited. The mess, what we see here is because of the PCM modulation. In real life, this frequency would be much higher and then you would not see such a disturbance. Now I have a motor here, for example, and I would now start to break the motor slightly. So I push power from the battery into the motor. And you now see that uh, the voltage signal of the load here, this is the load signal uh, from the load starts to phase shift compared to the signal from the signal generator and therefore you start now to pump power this is the red curve power from the source to the load we can continue and even go for more power so what uh, in a in a car now in an electric car this would mean that i would uh, push the car so i would accelerate the car and we see that the more I accelerate the car, the more there is a phase shift uh, between the leading signal of the signal generator and the load. So we see the phase shift here is now maybe 20 degrees or so. In this case, we can go to a maximum of, uh, hopefully this whole thing stays stable, to about uh, 1.4 kilowatt. Uh, it's not that much of a power but at least it, it shows the principle. And you see now that this red curve, the power curve is increasing. We can do the other way around. We can now push back power from the load. So we would break, then we could push back power from the load to the battery. So we would now charge the battery and you would now see that the red curve is going below zero. And we would then also see that now the, it's the load phase angle, which is then leading. So the signal generator is lagging the load and therefore we are pumping now power from the load back to the battery. 